Thank you very much. Please sit down as far as I'm concerned, that is. The director of the INSS, Brigadier General. Oh, we are so lucky, Amos Yadlin. The head of the Board of Directors, Mr. Pini Cohen, members of the Board of Directors, members of the Board of Trustees, distinguished guests from all across the globe, and all of you in the audience. In both the international and the national arena, the State of Israel and countries across the globe must now deal with a world that is becoming ever more threatening and unfamiliar. A world that is changing at an unprecedented rate. A world where the social and religious fluctuations are, in the main, unexpected. Within all of these circumstances, I want to focus on the threats and the challenges and tests posed by the Salafist jihadist movements for Israeli society. The Islamic State, or Daesh, is already here. That is no longer a secret. I am not speaking about territories bordering the State of Israel, but within the State itself. Research studies, arrests, testimonies, and overt and covert analyses, many conducted here by the, N by the NSS, clearly indicate that there is increasing support for the Islamic State, while some are actually joining IS among Israeli Arabs. Anyone familiar with Arab society knows that in recent years there has been considerable radicalization in some Bedouin settlements in the south and in Arab towns and villages in the north on the issue of the implementation of the Sharia law. Even in areas and groups identified as secular, we are today seeing the influence of extremist ideas. In various villages and at political rallies, some which have included the participation of members of Knesset, perhaps even unknowingly, we have seen the waving of the black flag. On social media, there can be seen an ever-growing sympathy with the Islamic State, while more and more moderate individuals feel threatened that the ground is being pulled from under their feet. You are all blind to what is happening among us, I was told by a senior figure in the Arab community. You do not understand the power of the changing views among the youth, he explained and added. I am struggling in these places day by day. If they, the youth, leave the educational institution, choosing Islamic State is the almost inevitable alternative. Facing the challenge of the Islamic State is not a problem unique to Israel. It is not a consequence of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, perhaps even the contrary. It is not possible to draw a clear poli political and geographic line of the axis of evil around which we can focus our forces or the enemy. In San Francisco, in Brussels, in Paris, in Istanbul, in Africa and in the Middle East, ra even in Jakarta, Radical Islam is acquiring more and more adherence and is creating a very real security challenge. The Salafist beliefs and the jihadist ideas, the ideology of the Islamic State that is represented by the Islamic State are moving much faster than the organization itself. And that ideology captivatingly draws in many young Muslims, talented, educated young Muslims, second and even third generation of assimilated immigrants, youngsters that have direct exposure to it in both the virtual and real world. The guiding principle of the Islamic State is an opposition to the concept of nation that is the fundamental basis of the Western world in general and in the Middle East in particular. The concept of the worldwide Islamic Caliphate subverts the current world order, whose cornerstone is the national concept. It both attacks it and undermines it. In the place of nation states, IS proposes a global approach, a global vision, 
a religious identity not dependent on ethnic or geographic boundaries, motivated by the evil ideas of the IS and its fighters. This is not a banal evil. The evil is not the evil of bureaucracy and clerks. The evil of IS is an altruistic evil, as defined by Lord Rabbi Jonathan Zacks. It is evil carried out in the name of and on behalf of a great and sanctified purpose. It is a holy evil. It is evil that celebrates its malevolence in videos, particularly of brutal executions, in abuse, in mockery of the fear of death. Martyrdom, the willingness to die, the willingness to kill, these are the tests of initiation to the movement. Death, in the name of God, grants the award of truth and power to those who flock to the IS. The death of the members of IS and the murder of others serve as the foundation for the justification of this ideology. For no one is prepared to die for anything less than truth itself the sublime truth. Abu Mus'ab al-Safuri, whose real name is Rabi Ashkhadi, a resident of Nazareth elite and an engineering graduate of the Ort Singalovsky College in Tel Aviv, has been recorded in a video addressing Christians and Alawites in Syria, telling them that he and his comrades, and I quote, love death for the sake of Allah more than you love death life. End of quote. This, as A.B. Joshua says, is the pornography of death, the sick showcasing of death which I.S. feeds on and is proud of. Distinguished guests, it is at this point when the speaker, and in this uh, case it is I, concludes his review of I.S. in Israel, very often we have an indictment directed at the Arab society, and Arab leadership in Israel. I do not for a moment deny the responsibility of Arab leadership. Their condemnations, which sometimes sound forced, feeble, hesitant, spoken in Hebrew but are then reformulated in Arabic, indicate above all else a sense of fear. More serious than this are those voices that blame the occupation as the source of all ills while displaying sympathy and understanding, sympathy and understanding for attacks on innocence. They are, are a stigma on a society that is more than anything in need of clearly expressed opinions. In Germany and France there is no occupation, yet the Islamic State is capturing hearts and minds and garnering support there. Yet at the same time, I do not believe that the solution is to abandon the Arab community to deal alone with the threat of IS that is growing within it. First and foremost, IS and radical forces in general thrive in a vacuum, a vacuum of sovereignty, a vacuum of law enforcement, a vacuum of responsibility, and a vacuum of a positive and secure identity. I am concerned that the more the state avoids taking responsibility, the more the state distances itself, the faster will the jihadi Salafists rush in to fill this vacuum. For them, this will be yet another proof, one of many, of the failure of the nation state. I spoke with an educator in the Arab sector who told me of his difficulties. This week, he said, a young man was seriously injured, a man of 20, a former pupil of mine. He was shot in the town center. On the news, no one heard about it. An Arab boy who sees this, he continued, asks himself, is my blood worth less? The Ministry of Education publishes director general contracts, but those are not binding on the Arab schools. Why not? Are those requirements not just as valid for the Arab community? And the teacher continued. The young Arab sees his peer, a Jew, of his own age. The young Jew has an identity. He has self-respect. He has an ambition 
to become an IDF commander. What does the Arab boy have? He hears of his Palestinian narrative and speaks of it only quietly, in closed rooms. These children see in the Islamic State their opportunity for glory. When they feel frustrated and angry, lacking opportunities, they go out into the streets and there the Imam waits for them. To me, as an adolescent, said that educator, I had a fantasy. I dreamed of integration. I believed I could be integrated, I could be a citizen with equal rights, that if I wanted to, I could go far. My pupils, they do not have that dream. I want to create a dream for the Arab child. I want to give him or her aspiration because of the opposition of our leadership, the Civilian National Service Program, I've said the educator set up for my students an independent volunteer network. I began with seven volunteers. Today, I have 60. Arab youth thirsts for meaning. If I see a child drawn to the Islamic State, I try using what power I have, said the teacher, to acquaint him with other worlds, to reinforce his identity, to enable him to try to build a positive dream. But it's hard for me. It's hard to do it alone. Our youth is seeking meaning and identity, and they must believe it is not only IS that can give it to him. So that's the end of the quote from my conversation, which I wrote down while I, with my own ears, heard this teacher speak and say these words. Distinguished guests, whether we want to or not, we are currently at a strategic point in time. When I took upon myself the promotion of the goal of full integration and partnership of the Arab community in the State of Israel, I did so as one who believes that we are not doomed to live together, but rather it's our destiny to live together. There's no other wa way. At the same time, I'm not doing this out of naivete or innocence. I'm a boy of Jerusalem, but I'm not that naive. I'm concerned that things may become worse before they get better, because that's what I fear. Unfortunately, the tension between the Arab and Jewish communities will not fade away, not in the next few years. But at the same time, the State of Israel certainly does not regard the whole Arab sector as an enemy, nor as a group tainted with extremism and Islamic fundamentalism. Arab society in Israel, to a great extent, and I'm not saying this because I feel like a patron, I was never educated and raised to be such a person, but Arab society in Israel, to a great extent, wants to see the state take responsibility over the Arab sector too. They desperately want the state to deal with the violence, to deal with the illegal weapons, to deal with the drug dealing, with the crime. Committees have been set up, reports have been written, but the sense that there is no justice, that's most prevalent. That is so particularly present, especially over the last decade, the lost decade, in terms of Jewish-Arab relations in the State of Israel. If the rot on which Islamic State is flourishing is, among other things, a result of a vacuum of identity and education, then the State of Israel must create an alternative, an alternative which does not fear a positive and secure Israeli-Palestinian identity, and at the same time does not in any way accept the delegitimization of the State of Israel or affiliation to the worst of our enemies. If the rot on which the Islamic State is flourishing is also a vacuum of governance or lack of security and lack of law enforcement, then we must do all we can to deal with that vacuum and to fully implement Israeli sovereignty over all parts of the State of Israel, even if that means increasing budgets and manpower. If the children, all of our children, Whoever is an inhabitant of Israel and has a child, their children are growing up without a dream, without hope, without aspirations, 
with the feeling that their blood and lives are of lesser value in the state of Israel, then we must think how we can offer them a dream, hope, faith, the faith that every one of them has the ability to succeed and to advance here in the state of Israel. I'm not even tempted to believe that these steps would be sufficient to defeat the Islamic State here in Israel. I know that the ISA and the police have to do more and intensify their capabilities among the Arab community while isolating the violent extremists and dealing with them with a firm hand. At the same time, we must not give in to the temptation of thinking that the security forces alone are sufficient to deal with this phenomenon. We must work to return a sense of trust between the Jewish and Arab populations, between the Arab population and the public sector, and confidence demands listening, investment, willingness, and commitment. The positive forces within the Arab community must receive backing and must feel a sense of security, both because first and foremost they deserve it, and also because then, and only then, will they be able to carry out a real battle against the jihadist Salafist threat that harms them even more than it does us. The recent resolution by the government on a system-wide plan for the economic integration of the Arab population is a step in the right direction. The plan has many, the gaps that have been created over the last few decades that the state has been in existence are gaps that, is, that are very hard to bridge. This resolution has many objectives, and it's obvious why, but it is a right step in the right direction because it is a resolution that is a real turning point. The money, the budget are earmarked. They are going to be used to bridge the gaps between Jews and Arabs in Israel. It is an important five-year plan. Its implementation is significant in Israel's efforts to regain responsibility for all its citizens and for its Arab citizens among them. It is true that there are still large gaps in the education budget, despite the efforts of the Ministry of Education, has not yet reduced those gaps. But this plan is changing the situation even slightly. During the past two weeks, I have visited the home of the Bakal family in Karmiel, together with the heads of Arab local authorities from the Karmiel region, Sakhnin, Dir al-Assad, and others. I also visited the home of the Rumi family in Ofakim, and at last Wednesday, the Sha'aban family in Lod. These well, Nashat Milchem came to murder Jews in Tel Aviv, but he did not hesitate to murder an Arab too, the minute he suspected that he might prevent him from fulfilling his aim. We do not need more events like these to realize that we are all here and we are all here together. We have to recognize the fact that we will only be able to overcome extremism, ignorance and violence if we work together. Before I conclude, I would like to thank the Institute for National Security Studies, INSS, and its executive director, Amos Yadlin. As I noted, I know as a one who meets many nations ar around the globe, I know how important it is to have an Amos Yadlin in this institute in order to explain to you what you should be explaining to others. And it'll be good if anyone who meets people abroad and represents us all, it'll be good if they understand well what we want to explain. I want to thank you all. As I noted, I was assisted in this speech by the analyses of the Institute's researchers, and I ascribe great importance to the existence of this independent and non-affiliated institute, which asks the difficult questions, offers analysis of Israel's strategic problems, and formulates new ideas out of a real concern for the welfare and peace of Israel. Without ignoring the fact and without being impacted more or less by opinions of these facts. In our struggle for Israel's security, we must be just and strong, strong and just. My wish for us all 
is that through our combined thinking, we shall navigate the state of Israel and Israeli society toward a safe place. May God bless you all. Thank you very much.